to the I would like to to welcome everyone to the October 4th, 2021 Unified Governments Landmarks Commission meeting. I'm now calling this meeting to order. Madam Secretary. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to read the Landmarks Commission statement. And Mr. Hand, would you please go to the attendees and move Mr. Van Middlesworth over as a panelist, please? We would like to welcome those participating to the meeting of the Kansas City, Kansas Landmarks Commission. Due to COVID-19, the members are participating remotely by Zoom webinar. Mr. David Meditz is serving as chairman this evening. Please note the following instructions for the meeting. If you are joining by Zoom video, please make sure you have an appropriate background and plan to stay visible during the meeting. Members use the raise your hand feature to speak. After Chairman Meditz recognizes you, unmute your microphone and please state your name when you begin to speak. For those in attendance, use the raise your hand feature when you want to speak on an issue. The chairman will recognize you when it is your time to speak. Unmute your microphone and state your name and address before giving your comments. If you have called in by telephone only, or if you are having trouble logging into the Zoom meeting, please email planninginfo at wycokck.org as Secretary Parker is monitoring that email. Proper meeting decorum is expected of all participating in the meeting and anyone who fails to act properly will be removed from the meeting. The city reserves the right to discontinue a meeting if any improper behavior occurs, which prevents the uninterrupted conduct of business. The format for this evening's meeting is as follows. The applicant will make the opening statement explaining the proposal. Please know that the applicant will be given 15 minutes to present their case. The 15 minutes includes the applicant, consultants, and other members of the applicant's team. Members of the Landmarks Commission will then address any questions they may have to the applicant. Any persons wishing to speak in favor will then be called upon and allowed to do so at that time. Then those persons in opposition will be called upon and allowed to make their statements and ask questions. Please note that each member of the public who wishes to speak will be given five minutes to express their opinions. Time may not be shared between speakers. Each speaker will be allowed to speak one time unless a question is directed to them. The Landmarks Commission is required to disclose any contact with regard to any application on the agenda. I will ask if any contact has been made and at that time, members of the commission will disclose any contacts they may have had. Mr. Chairman, we have two applications that we're going to consider. Our first one is Certificate of Appropriateness CA 2021-017. Stephen M. Hall. Certificate of Appropriateness to replace all wood and metal windows with vinyl windows at 1219 North 22nd Street, located in the West Height Manor Historic District, which is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and Register of Kansas Historic Places. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose on this application? I'll take that as a no since no one said me, yes. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hall is uh, on the call with us. All right. Welcome to our meeting this evening, Mr. Hall. Would you please state your name and your address for the record? And then you have 15 minutes, up to 15 minutes to uh, make your statement. The floor is yours, Mr. Hall. Okay.
Are you there, sir? Yeah, I am. Can can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, good. Sorry about the delay. My computer's trying to connect. Yes. Um, so I'm the owner of the property at 1219. And when I purchased the home, I was not aware that it's on a historical district, uh, which I respect that. But um, we had purchased some windows because the house itself, the windows were really, really bad. And um, some of the window glasses are broken. Uh, most of the windows don't even open inside the house. Um, and so as a real estate agent, most people, you know, putting in new windows help, helps the efficiency of your heating and cooling, uh, keeps it more safe and all those things. So uh, we had had some windows delivered um, and my contractor put a couple in, the window person, which we were stopped to do that, which, so we stopped the process, but the windows itself look real, real similar to the ones that are in there. I think there's like a quarter inch difference in the crossbar, but they're vinyl, they're secure, they're, they seal properly. And I had already put in a, a HVAC system that was over hundred years old in this house. Um, I got two systems, but to make it more complete, uh, you know, windows, you know, most people want, really want to buy new windows. Uh, inside the house, we're trying to save as much, you know, the flooring is going to be the same and all the other stuff. We, we don't want to change anything, but unfortunately this house has been neglected for gosh, 30 years. Um, and so we've just, I don't know how you would ever not replace them with new windows, um, because changing the storms and the exterior, uh, doesn't really fix, fix the problem of raising the windows because they're they're really just not working. The, the ones that have the tie, like the rope, they're broke, they don't work, they're not secure. Um, so right now I've got these windows. I don't know what other option I have because I'm not, I'm not gonna, I don't know how to even buy those. And actually this point, I'm probably not going to. Uh, we had dealt with the tile roof and I decided to go back with tile. Uh, it's not really a financial problem. It's about getting the product. That's kind of the issue is how do you get windows that fit in a historical house? Um, as an agent, I do realize there's some neighborhoods that still have old windows, but most buyers don't like that. They're like, can I not change the windows? And I'm like, well, certain area you can and certain you can't. This neighborhood uh, is a gorgeous neighborhood, but there's a lot of people have done different things. Across the street, there's a house that is two years older that has vinyl windows. The house next to me has vinyl siding. I mean, it doesn't look anything historical about it. In my opinion, based on the information you have, if you look at the one window that's been replaced or a couple that's been replaced to the old one, there's really no similar, there's nothing really that changes the, the look. And it, to my opinion, it doesn't take away from being historical uh, and nothing else will be changed. It's just, it's mainly on the inside, it's gonna look more different than the exterior, uh, but most people like that. And so I had my contractor, I don't know if he's on or not, uh, Salim, he may not be on there. He's also my brother-in-law was helping me with this. Uh, of having these windows made. They were actually custom made for this house. So I've got all these windows at the property that a few got installed, we stopped the process and I, I wanna put them in. If I don't put them in and don't get approved, I'm gonna have to leave them the way they are. Unfortunately, we may have to change a few, some glass, but unfortunately that doesn't make that house look that great in my opinion. Um, and I don't know any other way to go about it. So yeah, the, you can see the on the left picture, the lower one and the one to the right of that one, left of that one has the new window. And this house still looks historical in my opinion. They don't, it doesn't take away that house. It actually improves the house. Everything on the windowsill, all that'll stay the same. Nothing's gonna change. You know, obviously we'll paint the, the deck and stuff or the, the white, freshen it up a lot. But all these windows are, there's one not even there. It's, it's at the top to the left of this. There's no, not even a window there. Um, so yeah, you can see that the difference of this, the crossbar, and unfortunately these were already custom made and that's just what they do. So if there's anything I can do to modify the windows I have, I'd, I'd love to look at that, but I don't know if these don't work, I, I, I'm really gonna have to just leave the windows that are there and it's unfortunate if that's, that happens. So I don't know if you guys have any concerns, questions that I can answer or try to answer for you, but. I think they look really nice and, they, and once it's finished, it'll really look better, you know, it's, but to leave it like it is to the left, that left picture, that's going to look, that's just what it's going to look like. And I, I hate that because I can't do anything with it. The one on the right 
windows open and close. You know, when you have inspections, most people want the windows to work. And, I, and a lot of these hot windows don't even work. And, you know, I know some are broken glass, but I don't see where that takes away historical. I sell a lot of houses because I'm a real estate agent and uh, most people modernize the house. They want it to look newer, you know, but we're not trying to change the structure or the, the look of it. I, you're not going to see much difference between the left and the right, in my opinion. So I'm just trying to see if we can get some kind of exemption to make this happen where I can make this house look better than it was because it actually has been neglected for a long, long time. Do any of my fellow commissioners have a um, question? Sure. I do. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Beverly, uh, Easterwood Commissioner. Uh, wasn't, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hand, but uh, wasn't uh, there some provision for the um, petitioner to provide evidence, more evidence about the condition of the windows? Were you waiting on more information from the from Mr. Hall? Ms. Gunner Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, no, we think we have all the information we need to make our review and determination. We have been working with the applicant for several months now on the project. Okay. Are there any further questions for our applicant? This is Commissioner Hill. Yes, Commissioner Hill. Um, just one thing I kind of wanted to point out. The petitioner claimed he had no knowledge of this being a historic neighborhood. And as a real estate agent, I think he would have knowledge of those rules and regulations. And it's not an excuse in his position to feign ignorance of this issue. And that's just my opinion. Can I comment to that? Yes, you may. Uh, yeah, I am. I am to a Northlander. I'm not. This is the first time I don't do a lot of Kansas properties, and this is the first time I've ever purchased anything in Kansas. So, as a real estate agent, is it like I'm your community real estate agent? I do real estate throughout mainly the north of the river. So we do have a few historical districts, and I do know those. This one I did not know because I'm looking at houses, and they're different. There's a lot of them have vinyl siding. There's all kinds of composition roofs. I mean, they're just, there's so much variety. Uh, I walk the neighborhood and there's a lot of, if you, if you talk about violations, I mean, people asphalt over curbs. I mean, and then some people have done sidewalks that looks like a five-year-old did it. So I did not know, and I just don't cover that area. So I, I'm not, I was totally ignorant to it. The person I bought it from, uh, he was actually kind of a middleman to the person that owned it because he's very, very sick. And so I never really talked to the owner. I only talked to the brother-in-law, uh, but I never even knew it's the as a registry. I knew it looks nice, but there's a variety. Like if you look at that neighborhood, there's only probably 20% of the houses that have tile roofs. And I didn't want to do that either. I've been fighting with the city about it, not you know what to do because I had a composition roof ready to go. And that one I can fix. Yeah, it's three times the price, but I can do that. I mean, it's not what I want to do, I think the black would look better, another roof would look better on the house, honestly, because the red and red just clashes. But that's what it was, and that's what I did. But on windows, it's a lot harder than that. Finding something, you can't find a 100-year-old window that looks the same. They don't sell those. Tile roofs, you can buy something that looks just like 100 years old. So that's the deal. So I want to comment on that. I'm not really an expert in that community. Mr. Hall, this is uh, Chairman Meditz here. Commissioner Minutes, I have a couple of questions. One is, I believe you're now probably aware that this is one of the most historic districts within Kansas City, Kansas and Wanda County. And that we as a commission go by the guidelines, the national guidelines for such historic districts. And the decisions that we have to make are based upon those. Now, that's one. Item number two, are you aware 
in Wanted County that they just did a total revamp of the historic school in Bonner Springs. At that point in time, there was a local company that redid the windows and uh, preserved them. So there are, there is a company out there that quite possibly could help you with that. Um, that's just two questions that I had for you um, myself. Yep, thank you, sir. Well, for one, I've already got these windows because I didn't, we've, this is kind of what stopped the whole thing and I didn't know at the time. Uh, honestly, it doesn't change the look. That's, that's where I'm kind of like stopped on. What, is, what does this not look like historical because it has a vinyl window? I, I don't understand it. The one across the street has vinyl windows two years older than mine that is supposed to be on the registry. I mean, one is, I don't know why they weren't enforced the rules because there's a lot of people have it, but set aside that, I will probably leave them the way they are. I, I'll have to fix the glass, but I, getting people, the workforce is terrible right now. I can't even get, I mean, when I have to stop people in their job, which I, I, I understood that and I've got permits for everything I'm doing work for now, and I will continue to do that. But getting people to work is hard to do. I, I want this house fixed up, prettied up, sold. I'm not keeping it long term. So if I was on a late for three to four months, I'm not going to hold that. I'm not going to be able to do it. So I didn't know that you could even restore those old windows. And I, I think it's going to cost a whole lot more than what I can, what I already got for the windows. And I already made them custom made. I understand your, I respect your decision if that's what you choose but I'm not going to be able to do anything more than fix a broken glass. And it's just not gonna look that great. I think the biggest thing I don't understand is I, if I change the look of it, that looks so different, I can understand it. But it's not gonna look much different. If you see the window that I had, it, it really doesn't look any different. It doesn't take away it. You know, you don't pull it, oh, that's not a historical house. Even the one across the street that has a tile roof, and the windows are vinyl, it looks nice. It doesn't look anything different than a historical home, in my opinion. That's, see, so I'm looking at the left, right, and the right. It, it, it doesn't look any different, really. You know, you got brand new glass, you can see through it. And I just, I'm not changing any of the trim. I'm not changing the concrete seal. I'm not changing any of that. What you see that you're gonna, what it is. But unfortunately, the, the, what I get on the left is what's gonna happen. And it's not just the look of the exterior. I got windows that don't work. They just don't work. They, a lot of the ropes are broke and they're not secure. I mean, somebody can break in that house very quickly. And that's, it's sad when I put $20,000 for an HVAC system up and down, upstairs and downstairs, you got their own system because it's the only way you can keep this house cool. It's a hundred years old, right? And heated. So anyway, you know, I decided I needed to go ahead and change. I mean, I want to change the windows. That way when they buy this house, everything's new. I got a brand new tile roof. I got brand new windows. I got a new HVAC system, you know, but I guess what your, but your thing is about somebody else about doing this in the neighborhood, there's, there's people that have this already. And that's what I'm kind of thrown off. Matter of fact, we did it exactly like the window that's currently there. They made it exactly like it. The one to the left and right is no different other than a, maybe a quarter inch different on the crossbar. That's it. And that's, what's really surprised. It's really disappointing because those windows are going to be moved to other, I'll just have to take them to another house over time when I, have some houses built up at North. I'll have to have them use them and some will go to waste, but, um, but it's a shame because that house will never look as good as it can look, as in my opinion. Thank you, sir. If that ends your- minutes. Yes. I might like to ask if uh, we could discuss another elephant in the room the petitioner keeps mentioning about the other homes there is only so much that we can do and we can't necessarily go back to all the previous work that was done without our knowledge and that i would like for uh for gunner to iterate what we can and cannot do and how what other people have done does not negate the petitioner's responsibilities uh, I think that is a valid point, but I'm not certain it really 
needs to be addressed right during this session. Here, I think that is for a discussion um, amongst ourselves and how we want to continue from this point. But I think we have a standard right now to go by and we need to not open another, let's say elephant in the room. Let's just handle this one and we will move on. Yes, sir. Thank you, Thank you for your comment. At this point, if that ends your portion of the presentation, um, Mr. Hill, Mr. Hall, uh, I would ask, is there anyone else in attendance in support of this certificate? Yeah, my brother-in-law and contractor, Salim Laham, is on the call. If they would state their name and address, I would welcome comments from them up to five minutes. Thank you. Can uh, everyone hear me? Yes. Oh, there you go. My name is uh, Salim Laham. I've been the one uh, helping out, doing a lot of the work. Um, there was just a couple things like what I wanted to add just you know, with some of the breakage in the glass there, I mean, obviously that's an issue with the straight glass. God forbid, you know, one of the windows or the sashes come down on the new tenants and it's just a safety issue as opposed to the straight glass and the tempered glass. Um, the, the gentleman that actually uh, made these windows, you know, try to make them as close as possible. We can get them to still have the structural integrity to hold up the window and uh, reduce the UV and all the interior <clears throat> climate control on them. Um, but I think that, that would probably be my biggest, um, deal. That's why we made a point to have, um, distance photos to be able to see side by side on those two front windows of what it actually looks like from the street, considering all the old windows are still white. The new ones are going to be white. Um, that's pretty much all I had to add is, is, is just the aesthetics. It's, it's not going to change much, uh, from the street curb. And can I, can I interject something? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Salim, I mean, you, you, can, you can vouch getting people to do stuff and getting supplies is, is a nightmare right now. Yeah, it's, ex it's extremely difficult. And also being on the contracting side, I mean, anything with a certain dollar amount is possible. That Bonner Spring project, sir, wasn't that like a $39, $40 million remodel that was approved through the city? Well, it was a whole build, whole building, but the the point of my deal was it, there was a local contractor that yeah. uh, could do the windows. Yeah, and that's and, and we also got to stay within the reasoning too with the you know the cost effectiveness of that of the home. Um, I mean, I could put thousand dollar windows in there in each sash, but realistically, um, it, it doesn't really make financial sense considering the price point on this home, um, and we really don't want to supersede the value of it either and price it way out of the market to where um, the home sits vacant for any longer period of time. I mean, our main goal is to get somebody in there occupying it and maintaining the property and keeping the aesthetics of the neighborhood. Right now, you know, like I said, it's, it's difficult to even get anybody to come over there and cut the grass, um, you know, because that's that alone is an eyesore in y'all's neighborhood. So um, that's that's really the deal. I mean, I can build anything for any dollar amount. Thank you for your comments. Yes, sir. Thank you. At this point in time, is there anyone here to speak in opposition? Being none, I'm going to close the uh, this portion, the public portion of the meeting on this certificate, and we can now talk amongst ourselves to come up with a conclusion. Do any of my fellow commissioners have any comments they wish to make to the staff? Does staff have any comments they would like to make to the commission? Mr. Chair, this is <clears throat> going to hand Director Plain Urban Design. I have a quick 
summary of the process to date. So as I had mentioned before, um, staff have been working with the applicant for uh, a few months now. Um, the original application was for more than the windows. Since that time, we were able to work with the applicant in order to provide an in-kind um, match of the roof, um, which he mentioned earlier, um, and do that with an exemption um, that was reviewed and approved by the State Historic Preservation Office. There was some additional flat work and other restoration work uh, proposed as the project with the project again, which we were able to provide with um, an exemption letter. The remaining scope of work were for all of the windows of this house. Part of the staff report includes the review by the State Historic Preservation Office of this work as per the Secretary of Interior Standards. All efforts um, to restore um, the windows must be taken before any in-kind replacement are, is to be approved based on the information provided by the applicant, which I believe was my incomplete answer to Commissioner Easterwood's earlier question. Um, we, were, we have seen uh, at the site nor received any additional information that these were beyond repair. Um, as such, both the state and staff recommend denial. Um, I would also add that in addition to Mr. Medit's uh, comments, we are um, aware of multiple contractors who can do this restoration work, which admittedly is more labor intensive, more time consuming, and potentially more expensive. Um, staff is here to take any comments. Questions, excuse me. Do, do I, does one of my commissioners have a question? Director Hand, while I'm waiting for that comment, uh, I, I believe that just a statement on my part is after having been through some training this summer on this, this is not a, a uncommon situation all across the country, but one of the main things that they strive is it has to be, if at all possible, a wooden window is replaced with a wooden window, not with a fiberglass or composition window. And they stress that sometimes the windows that if they were allowed, the um, products are not compatible with each other and deterioration then becomes a factor uh, sooner than later. Madam Secretary, are you online? I am, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I keep hearing a little bit of background noise. So uh, I somebody that is unmuted has uh, noise going on. All right. That's fine. Uh, it's understandable with what we're having to do. I just wanted to make sure that I gave everyone the opportunity to speak that needed to. If there's no more discussion from my fellow commissioners, I would accept a motion to either approve or deny CA 2021-017. Commissioner Hill has her hand raised, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Hill. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Commissioner Welcome Hill. I make the motion that we, based upon the recommendations of staff, deny this uh, this uh, certificate of appropriateness. Do I hear a second? Or has someone signified a second?
I believe that- he is necratic had his hand up. All right. Thank you, because I, there he is. <laughs> now I see. <laughs> it has been and moved and seconded that the Kansas City, Kansas Landmarks Commission deny the petition CA2021-017 and it is not in compliance with the city code as it will not promote the health, safety, welfare of Kansas City, Kansas and other such reasons that have been mentioned and stated by staff. Madam Secretary, I will call for the vote. Land? No. Craddock? Aye. Easterwood? Aye. French? Mrs. French? I said no. You hear me? I did now, yes. Okay. Hill? Hill? Aye. Trader? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Van Middlesworth? Okay, you've raised your hand, so I'm going to assume that's I. Mr. Chairman, that motion to deny the certificate of appropriateness for the reasons outlined by the staff and the Kansas State Historical Society, or office, I'm sorry, passes six in favor and two opposed. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Mr. Chairman, our next application is Certificate of Appropriateness CA 2021-020. Lisa K. Patterson. Certificate of Appropriateness for the demolition of the rear enclosed patio and to alter the front, I'm sorry, the roof and front deck at 422 Sandusky Avenue. This is the Skiff House It's within the environs of the St. John's Orphanage Historic Landmark, which is listed on the Register of Kansas Historic Places. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose concerning this application? Hearing none, I will take that as no. And I believe uh, Ms. Patterson may be the phone number that's listed here under the attendees. Ms. Patterson, are you with us? This is Lisa Patterson. Do I have audio to the meeting? Uh, I can we, I can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. Um, that was. Please state your name and address. Sure, Lisa Patterson, two one four two three two hundred and twenty seventh Street, Tonganoxy, Kansas. I'm here about property at four twenty two Sandusky, Kansas City, Kansas. Thank you, ma'am. You have 15 minutes to, up to 15 minutes to make your case with our commission. Okay, well, I I don't need a case to make if you agree with the staff report to approve, Um, but I will just give you a summary of what we're asking to do. Um, It is correct that the roof um, would move from the faded uh, worn gray to black just to provide a a crisp look to the house. Um, And just a bit of a clarity, the front deck isn't looking to be replaced. We have to repair the front deck. It is um, structurally not in good shape and we'll leave everything that um, is visible in the same way that it is. These photos that you're looking at, you won't see pictures. Oh, there you go. The front deck is gonna look like that. What's happening is underneath it, all of that is rotted and sagging. So that'll just be what's repaired. Um, And the hand railing there on the front um, wouldn't pass a code. I wouldn't let my kids walk on that front deck. So we'll just make that to code, but use the exact same materials. Um, I think what's gotten the most uh, energy and attention from 
uh, the report that you see is if you move back to the pictures on the back, we need to take off this porch. Um, we purchased the house uh, late in July. It had been vacant since 2014, and that means lots of uh, demolition by neglect, I guess. And so that addition that had gone on, not original to the house, is in really um, poor, unsafe shape. It doesn't let you have good egress to the house. It really creates a lot of problems, not only into the back of the house, but into the cellar. Um, so that structure that porch there that you're seeing that just needs to come down when we do that there's actually the original window um, that will be revealed in the house the original door frame the original um, porch light location so um, the stucco that is on the rest of the house is going to be revealed so it will look just very much like part of the house because of the way that this this structure was just simply tacked on um, and not really part of the original home so I think I've touched on those important elements. I just do want to call out, there's a part in the staff uh, report, and I know we talked about this, I talked about this with staff, but it says that the siding, once we remove that porch, needs to be the horizontal siding. And just for clarity, the existing exterior of the home that you see on the other three sides is what's behind that porch. So we don't want to be forced to change that. Um, and I think that James understood that once I showed him pictures, um, but we wanna just use the existing exterior once that roof come, that uh, porch roof comes off, it'll look just like the front of the house. Are there specific questions? Do any of my fellow commissioners have any questions for our applicant? Mr. Schrader has a question or a comment. Go ahead, Mr. Schrader. Um, Ms. Patterson, I first of all, uh, thank you for uh, um, taking on this home and, uh, and working on it. Uh, it's much appreciated to have people come in and invest in, in our uh, older neighborhoods. It's much appreciated. Um, I did want to point out that uh, I'm glad you're able to work with the staff and that uh, I think everything's going to move forward uh, that's, and both parties will be happy about the way it moves forward. This uh, property is not historic in and of itself. It, is, it comes before us because we are, um, because the home is within 500 feet of the historic landmark, the St. John's Church. Um, but it's not something that truly affects uh, in and of itself. The work that you're intending to do is not going to affect anything with the St. John's Church. So um, again, I think that I, I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I know you had to come before us and I, uh, I don't see anything that you're doing that uh, is contrary to uh, what this Landmarks Commission is supposed to be doing. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Then hearing none, I will ask if there is anyone else to speak in favor of this certificate. Hearing none or seeing none, I'll ask, is there anyone here to speak in opposition? Hearing none or seeing none, is there any, I will close the public hearing at this point. Do any of my commissioners have any questions for staff? Mr. Chair, you're muted somehow. Can you hear me now? You're back. Yes. All right. I think the staff report is fairly complete. Um, I think it's well done. And it includes, if we choose to um, approve or deny, but if we choose to approve it, they have put in some additional conditions that would apply. 
in the future, which I think is also very good. That Mr. is, if I may. Yes. This is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Um, it was alluded to by Commissioner Schrader, but just to, for clarification, as this is a proposed demolition within an historic environs, it does need to receive a certificate of appropriateness. Again, the demolition is only for the back exterior addition to the house, which through research staff was able to determine was not original to the house. Um, you do see some conversation or some uh, information about the uh, other components of the house, which would typically have been covered by an environs review, but since we elevated this due to the de partial demolition to a C of A, we went ahead and included it. Um, that's why there's conditions of approval, for instance, um, that we would have put in our environs uh, letter regarding the front porch and its restoration, making sure that it maintains the existing wood um, flooring. Um, I believe it is a metal railing. I could be wrong, but uh, historically there were all wood railings in that neighborhood. So we asked for the replacement to be wood if any repair work needed to be done to the original columns and or um, brick foundation of those, as you can see here, um, porch posts, that those be restored in kind. We do have a condition of approval still in the staff report. You can see it well here in this picture on the left the siding on the top half of the house, which mimics the siding on the front top half of the house. Um, if removed, we had asked that that siding continue down to the ground level of the rear of the house. If, uh, as Mr., excuse me, as Commissioner Schrader had noted, um, staff would be open to changing that condition if you felt that was inappropriate, but we felt that it would be appropriate to continue it as we do not believe stucco was the original material of the house. And if we're going back to the original rear facade that we should restore said um, siding to match what is above it. With that, staff would happy to take any questions. Do we have any further questions for staff? This is the applicant, and I would like to speak specifically to the condition of the horizontal siding on the exterior. If you can look at the picture of the front of the house, are you able to move to that? Mr. Chairman, before she okay. speaks, um, if you have closed the public hearing, you will need to reopen it and recognize her. I will reopen it and let the applicant address that issue at this point, then I will close it again. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate that. If you look at the front of the home, you will see that it is stucco below the um, porch roof and it is horizontal siding above. And now if you flip back to those pictures where I have the interior, what you can see is it is horizontal above the roof line of the back porch. It is stucco below. If you include the staff point that we need to return to horizontal siding, we are either going to have to rip stucco off the back of the house, which matches the other three sides and the facade to the front would be exact, or we're going to have to put new material over that. So in essence, we're not being able to return the house in the shape it was before they added this porch, and we're going to be forced to incur additional expense. I just want to be really clear that exterior stucco that's on the other three sides is what's right here on this back porch. The horizontal that's on the gable part matches what's on the front. I'm very uncomfortable with the staff recommendation that we have to change the back siding when we take the porch off. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I will now again close the public portion of this meeting and back to the conversation amongst ourselves. I have one question, Director Hand. If we approve this demolition with stipulation that you can come to some kind of an agreement and you said you were willing, I believe you stated you were willing to revisit that portion with the applicant. It's going to hand director of plain urban design. If you wanted to change that condition, we could do it right now in this 
in this meeting or by your motion. Um, again, I would just say we were not able to find any old historic photos of the house to date it back to pre um, before the addition was made. We looked at Sanborn maps to confirm that it's not original to the house. I mean, they've been using stucco since the late 1800s. So it is plausible that the whole house was stucco. The applicant did submit, a, it was, it's not a picture, it's like an old, it's an old kind of like a painting drawing of it. And it looks like there was original siding, horizontal siding to all the houses. If you look at the character of the neighborhood, we weren't able to identify any stucco. Um, it's all horizontal siding. So uh, again, I don't think it dramatically changes the character of the house one way or another. So I would, uh, we're open to, to changing the condition if you think that's appropriate. Chairman. Yes. Are we ready for a motion? Yes. I move that we approve the certificate. I don't have it in front of me, but- uh, Mr. Chairman, I need to interrupt. I need the Landmarks Commission to identify themselves first, please. Oh, I am sorry. This is Commissioner Jim Schrader. Um, and I move that we uh, approve this certificate of appropriateness with the staff uh, recommendations and stipulations with one change that um, the existing uh, stucco uh, facades uh, may remain, um, may remain, may remain. This is Commissioner Welcome Hill. I'd like to second the motion, please. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. It's been moved and seconded that uh, we approve the staff recommends the Kansas State Kansas Landmark Commission approve CA 20-020 subject to all comments and suggestions outlined in the staff report with the exception of the rear facade use of horizontal siding that the uh, siding may remain stucco. I'll call for the boat if you got what I said. <laughs> got it. Bland? Aye. Craddock? Aye. Easterwood? Aye. French? Hill? Yes. Schrader? Yes. Taylor? You're Mr. muted, Lauren. Lauren? Yes. And Van Middlesworth. Mr. Chairman, that motion to approve this certificate of appropriateness with the revised conditions as outlined by Commissioner Schrader passes eight in favor and none opposed. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the application. So we will now move to the front of the agenda. The next item is recommendation of commission on the National Register nomination for the Kansas City, Kansas Police Garage, AKA KCK City Hall and Fire Headquarters at 538 Ann Avenue. As you know, I distributed the information that staff received from the state uh, historic preservation officer regarding this nomination that will be considered on November the 13th and they've asked the commission either to support the nomination uh, against the nomination or take no action. That's So that's your three options. Thank you, Madam Secretary. I believe that 
the police headquarters is already on the registry. This is just a um, kind of an amendment to it that they're going to, uh, or an addition to that that they're doing. Mr. Chair, this is going to hand director of planning and urban design. That's correct. They, they'd like to add the garage behind the old city hall. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the work that they've done. Are there, there any questions from my fellow commissioners? I have a comment. Yeah. Uh, I thought this commissioner his... Hill. No, this is French. All right, Mr. French, Commissioner French. All right, David, you must be tired. Okay, uh, I just wanted to make a, a statement and uh, about the historic history that was provided with this document. I thought it was excellent, and I appreciate Gunner and his staff in providing all of that information. And that's it. And I make a motion that we approve. Uh, what is the number? C A. Well, this is this isn't a certificate. This isn't a, okay. a, a actual. Is we are all we have to do is uh, vote to support this uh, to the state. So we don't have a C A on it. All we are doing is saying that we do support this particular nomination. Do you need and, a motion? Yes. Okay, well then I make a motion that we approve and support this recommendation to add the KCK Police Garage to the Register of the National Historic Preservation. Do I have a second? I have a second. I believe that was Mr. Van Millsworth. I think it was Mr. Craddock. Craddock. Okay, I only have partial screen to see who is speaking but we mr chairman we need to remind the commission members that before you speak either raise your hand or state your name for the record so that it's on the recording and then we both know thank you for the reminder at this point is there any discussion if not it's been moved and seconded that we support the recommendation of the commission for the registry of the police garage. I'll, I'll call for the question. Land? Aye. Craddock? Aye. Easterwood? Aye. French? Aye. Hill? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Van Middlesworth? Mr. Van Middlesworth? Well, there we go. Just... Mr. Chairman, that motion to support the expansion of this historic landmark on the National Register of Historic Places passes eight in favor and none opposed. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Mr. Chairman, our next item on the agenda is the downtown historic KCK update from Director Hand. Director Hand, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, this is just a quick update. Um, we've been tracking this for some time, but I just wanted to make sure everybody knew what was going on. The RFP closing date is this coming Monday, a week from today, October 11th. Um, we have received a few questions about the RFP, which we have answered and posted online through our procurement department. Um, we do believe we should be getting multiple um, requests, fingers crossed. You never know until they come in on the deadline. Um, but our intent and our hope is to form a selection committee, make a decision on a consultant, ideally, um, formalize an agreement and begin the work uh, ahead of our November meeting um, where we can I, hopefully again and ideally introduce the consultant team to the Landmarks Commission and uh, talk about how we're going to move forward with the project. Thank you, Director Hand. 
Are there any questions for Director Hand? If not, I do appreciate the work that you and all your staff does on this topic. We'll move on to reports, Madam Secretary. Chairman, our first report is an update from the Outreach Subcommittee by Subcommittee Chairman Schrader. Uh, yes, this is uh, uh, Commissioner Jim Schrader. Uh, I really don't have a report other than um, uh, as a follow-up to the meeting that we had here a month or so ago with uh, st staff before they sent out the RFP. Uh, part of the language in the RFP is that the successful consultant will do outreach to the um, um, to the businesses and residents in the in the areas that uh, are potentially going to be uh, part of the historic district, and uh, I, I will uh, make sure that uh, we have the opportunity as our subcommittee uh, and the whole commission to uh, to meet with the uh, consultants uh, and see how we can assist with that outreach, or if there's things that. Uh, we might be able to do that they can't or that they can do that we can't. So that's really my only report is that we will coordinate uh, our downtown outreach with the outreach that's required of the consultant. So that being said, unfortunately, I need to scoot off of this call and uh, wish everyone well. We'll see you next month. Sorry, I have to leave a little early. Thank you, Commissioner Schrader. We'll move on to Director Hand once again. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, this is going to hand director of planning and urban design. I just wanted to again remind everybody, and I believe it was sent out earlier with your agenda packet. I was able to, uh, after our last conversation about our proposed annual report that we'd like to put together in anticipation for um, Historic Preservation Month next May 2021. Um, a little more detail about what we're thinking, a little more detail about the type of metrics we would like to um, uh, review at that meeting, um, and then kind of how we would uh, display and or provide that information to both the commission and um, the board of commissioners in total. Uh, so as we get closer into 2021, uh, or to 2021, and the board of commissioners starts to lay out their agenda, we're working with them to set aside some time for, uh, I think we'll probably end up being on the neighborhood and community development standing committee agenda. Um, and then from there to the full board of commissioners, there's talk about maybe doing just a full board of commissioners hearing and being on some one of those agendas as a special item perhaps. Our thinking though is that we will present said annual report um, to the Landmarks Commission the month before just to make sure it looks right um, and there's a possibility if you also choose to be a part of that presentation in some way, shape or form. So we're totally open to whatever. Again, I was able to kind of more formally put, to, put our thoughts down on paper um, and provide the official memorandum. So if you guys have any comments, questions, additions, subtractions, ideas, thoughts about this and what it should be, please let us know and we'll start working in more uh, detail with the Board of Commissioner and their, and their executive assistants uh, at City Clerk essentially to, to set up um, the date and all that stuff. Thank you, Director Hand, for that report. We do appreciate it and all the hard work again. Mr. Chair, I believe uh, Commissioner Welcome Hill has her hand up. It's all good. I was just gonna say the same thing that David said, that I read over the report or the memo. I think it's spot on. And once again, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you very much. If there, no more, if there's no more questions for Director Hand, we can move on. I think you uh, had some comments on training. I do. Uh, again, this is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Um, so we were able to have a conversation with, uh, I guess they're a consultant. Uh, to work with us on a Landmarks Commissioner training. It's been a while since we've done this. We're actually going to, uh, or we've hired or brought on the same 
consultant who did our city planning commission training, which we thought went really well. Uh, that was actually about a year ago now. Um, our thinking is that this would happen on our January meeting. Our thinking is that it would include ethics training, uh, which is required of the commission. I think it's every three years, Ms. Parker, if I'm incorrect. Um, so we have some update to do and some of the new members need to take it anyway. Um, and then we are also hoping to bring on Ms. Katrina Ringler from the State Historic Preservation Office, who will give an overview or review, if you will, of the um, uh, Secretary of Interior's um, standards and what those mean and how we use them as tools um, in our review process. There's quite a bit of uh, activity between our staff and uh, State Historic Preservation Office. We are working to update our own um, certified local government CLG status as a part that is required every, I believe it's five years. Um, we're currently technically out of compliance, so we do have to do that. Uh, what I have told the State Historic Preservation Office is that we are turning a corner at the unified government. We are becoming more proactive and we are looking to become, um, there are different levels of certified local government, if you will. Um, some certified local governments have agreements with the state to do all of their reviews. Um, and we're not there yet, but that is our full intent to get to that point, um, to be um, sort of fully autonomous, if you will, at the point where we have dedicated staff and training and all this other kind of stuff. So we're working towards that. And we believe this is a part of that. What I would ask is we do still have an opening in the Landmarks Commission. And now if we have a deadline of January, um, we would like to try to fill it before that training. Um, if you remember, again, based on what's required of us um, in our own local ordinance, but, it, but also it's reflective of a um, certified local government status, we still need a someone in the mortgage industry as a part of the commission to fully round us out. So it is unfortunately a very specific uh, ask. Um, all other requirements of the local ordinance and state requirements have been met in terms of the expertise of our existing composition of our commission. Um, but we do need somebody basically who either works for a bank or a mortgage lending company to join us and that would fully round us out. So um, we did reach out to Mr. Meditz, your recommendation and got no reply. So I think we, I guess, should move on maybe to the next one if we have any. Well, I'm working on two or three more. Okay, great, there. thank you. Uh, I've got, you know, the, your, uh, one of the things is the availability because of their work schedules, right? Your residency is the second one, <laughs> but, uh, so we're working on a couple, um, one is, um, uh, within the county, but not particularly within the city. So I, I don't know about that one though. Each one of our commissioners gets to appoint a representative to this commission. So we've had one from Edwardsville before. There is the potential of having maybe one from the uh, financial industry from one of the banks now in Bonner. I don't know. So, you know, I'm willing to take any kind of banker I can get. <laughs> right. So I believe, well, I'm working. And Ms. Parker, I'm working on two wrong, more. I'm, sorry, Mr. Chair. I'm working on two more for you. And if anyone else on this commission has a recommendation, please get it to our director. If that's it, I'm going to call for adjournment. Mr. Chair, I believe Commissioner Welcome Hill has her hand up again, and I do have actually one more training announcement after that. All right, Commissioner Hill, again. Uh, uh, one question and a suggestion. Gunner, I have a person in mind, and I will let them, or I'll let you know about them. They are a Wyandotte County resident, and um, someone who's worked in the mortgage industry um, for decades. I don't know if that's what they still do, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it would probably satisfy your requirements as 
they have kept their licensing current. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the question is, um, which commissioner's seat has not been filled? Um, Ms. Parker can confirm, I believe it's Commissioner Walters, but the only requirement other than the, let's say, courtesy of letting each commissioner appoint their own commissioner um, is, is that we, we let them do it. The only real requirement is that you have to live in the county. And, uh, and, and the other thing, <clears throat> just make sure that if you do contact someone that they understand that um, it's not a given because it will still be up to the commissioner to appoint that person. Right. Um, it's actually Commissioner Kane's appointment. Oh, my apologies. That works out perfectly because they're in Commissioner Kane's district. All right. <laughs> So, uh, Commissioner, welcome, Helen. If you do, if that does work out, and you do advance that nomination, if you could just please copy the chair and Ms. Parker, that'd be much appreciated. Now, just to make sure I have the correct protocol, do you want me to contact them first, or do you want to contact them first? I think that why don't you see if they're interested, and then send the information to us, and then what I can do is contact them and explain what is entailed by being on the Landmarks Commission. And then if they're agreeable, then we will forward that up to the commissioner's liaison for consideration. Yes, ma'am. And then Mr. Chair, one last quick announcement I wanted to make. Uh, I think we sent this link around, but I just wanted to make everybody aware that um, the National Alliance for Preservation Commissions had a conference, I think it was like two weeks ago. They have now posted all of their presentations online, um, as well as the slide decks and bios of the, of the um, panelists. Those presentations are only up until I believe November 7th. I've watched all of them, they're pretty good. But again, they are specifically directed to preservation uh, commissioners. So I just wanted to give you that reminder if you hadn't had a chance to look at those, there's some good ones in there. I, uh, I attended those sessions and uh, they were very, very well presented. I believe that's the one that has the Bonner School in it that you're talking about, I think was one of the presentations there. And uh, it is well worth uh, watching those presentations because it hits on a lot of subjects that uh, we deal with, hassle over, and are going to have to deal with. Thank you for that comment, Director Hand. If there are no other comments. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Before uh, you adjourn the meeting, I just want to remind the commission that next month meeting is uh, November the 1st. Please put that on your calendar. We will have the um, Kansas City, Kansas Community College's application on the agenda. And they also will have four corresponding additional applications that they've filed for surrounding property there on the agenda. And we may have one more. So from another applicant. I know the Chiefs are playing that night, but put it on record and then <laughs> we can all watch it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Secretary. And I will see you November the 1st and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you one and all. Thank you, have a good night.